This is Support a Sexy, episode 190. When it comes to your business, are you clear? Welcome to Support a Sexy. I'm your host, Elaine Fluker, entrepreneur, author, and founder of Chic Rebellion Media. Five days a week, Monday through Friday, I interview inspiring women entrepreneurs who share their wins and their lessons to help you take your business and your life to the next level and create something sexy. Here we go. Hi, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of Support is Sexy. I'm excited to have you here. You know, it just would not be the same without you. And today I wanted to talk to you about getting clear about your business. When it comes to your business, do you feel like you're clear? I mean, really clear, like crystal clear. Everyone talks about you need to know your why, right? Don't forget your why. Don't forget your why. But can you articulate that with ease? Do you feel like you know enough about your audience to talk about why you're creating whatever it is you're creating for your audience? And do you know why this business, this creation, this product, this service really matters to you? Those are some of the questions I want to ask you today as you get clear about your business. And I'll tell you what brought this on for me. I've been having, as I mentioned in the last episode, go back and listen to it. We talk about getting out of your complacent zone. I've been meeting with a lot of different people, whether it's for new business or just out at events, talking to people about what I'm doing, what I'm creating, not only with the Support is Sexy podcast, but also with my business, which is my overarching media business, ChicRebellionMedia.com. Um, go check out the website. We just got a new website, C-H-I-C rebellionmedia.com, which is a multimedia content company that creates content that engages and empowers women. See, I had to get clear on that. But during all of these conversations, people would ask what I do. I want to articulate how I have Seek Rebellion Media. I also want to articulate how I have Support a Sexy Podcast, that it's for women entrepreneurs and what that's all about. But when you're having those conversations, whether it's in a pitch meeting or you're just talking to someone in a seemingly casual conversation, but if you're talking about business, it's about business, right? You want to be clear in your own mind before you even express it, all of the things you need to know about your business. So I've been thinking about that and I wanted to share some ideas with you all for how to get clear. Now, I don't say or pretend that I have all of the answers, but I do have a lot of the questions. So we're going to ask some questions today that will hopefully provoke you to think about your business in a new way or to get clear that, yeah, that's exactly what my business is. Whatever it looks like for you, we want to help you get clear. Because as your business continues to grow and evolve, there will be a few questions that you have to face, whether you're asking them of yourself or, as I said, pitching them to people. This could be investors, contacts, potential customers even. So I want you to embody that confidence confidence when talking about your business. And to do that, you have to be clear. Okay, so we're going to go through a few key questions and I'll give you a little bit of explanation about each and why I think it's important. But these questions will help you get clear and be sure to listen out to the end of the episode so you can find out where to go to get a free download that I'm offering. So you can print this out, paste it on your vision board, capture it on your phone, use it as a guide wherever you need to to help you get clear. Maybe it's something you want to have on your phone and look at before you go into that big meeting, that presentation, talking to your clients, etc. So I'm offering a free download. Be sure to listen out to the end so you know where to go to get that, okay? Okay, so the first of our seven questions. And you can write this down, of course, or you can wait and get the free download that I'll tell you about at the end of the episode. This way you'll have all of that information there. But again, you can write it down if you like and take notes. All right, first question. Why are you doing this? People always say, remember your why. But do you even know what your why is? Much less remember it. Do you even know what it is? If not, do you know how to discover it? Here are some questions to consider when you're trying to figure out why am I even doing this thing? First, what's your motivation? What excites you about this business or opportunity or product or service that you've created? What really turns you on about it? What makes it sexy? You know, we're all about that. What makes it sexy to you? What makes it special to you? And why do you think it will be special and meaningful to people that you hope to serve? That's important too, right? Why will it be something special to them? And how do you want your creation to better their lives? 
So those are some of the things to think about when you're thinking about why am I doing this? What's your motivation? What excites you about it? What makes it special to you? Why do you think it'll be special and meaningful to the people you serve? And how do you want this creation to better their lives? Second overarching question, why does it matter to you? What's your personal investment in this business, this opportunity, this product, or this service? Beyond your financial investment, of course, we all make financial investments, whether it's a big one, quote unquote, big or small, into our businesses and continue to do so. But beyond that, what does it stir in you? Why does it matter? Why was it so important to you personally to start this business in the first place? You must have had a reason, right? Is it all about money? And if that's the case, I challenge you to dig deeper. Now, of course, it's okay to want money. You need money in our society. That's how it works. Of course, you want to make money on your business. And it's great to even start a business because you think it's an idea that is potentially lucrative. But if it doesn't matter to you, I guarantee you, you will probably burn out before it's time, before you get to that point that it's a lucrative business. If you don't have a reason that this matters to you, or that it matters to the audience that it serves. So think about that. Why does it matter to you personally? What did you experience? What did you come up against? Even if it's something that's not for you, for example, if I'm a woman and I've created a men's shoe line, what drove me to that? It must've been that I saw that there wasn't any kind of shoes that I really thought were great for men and I thought I could present something else. So we're not saying why does it matter to you personally, meaning is something you personally have to use, But why does it matter? There must have been a reason that you are connected to this thing. All right, third overarching question. Who do you serve? Who's in your audience? Who's your target? Who are your clients? And what do you know about them? And why do you think they will get something out of what you have to offer? Have you done your research to find out statistics on your customer? For example, when I was thinking about Support is Sexy, I started it because as a woman entrepreneur, I felt like there wasn't a lot of podcasts out there that were speaking directly to me, featuring other women entrepreneurs who I could learn from at all stages of the journey. That part of it is the personal connection, why it matters to me. But then I began to do research, more and more research. I was already into it, but even more so because I wanted to speak to this audience about women entrepreneurs. So what I know is that between 2007 and 2016, the number of women-owned businesses in the U.S. increased by 45% compared to a just 9% increase among all businesses. So women-owned businesses are increasing five times the amount of other businesses in the United States. And for women of color, that number is even higher. The increase is 126%. That is crazy. But what all of that means is there are so many women entrepreneurs out there starting new things, starting new businesses, whether it's full-time, moonlighting, whatever it is, they're creating their own businesses. And as of 2016, it's estimated that there are now 11.3 million women-owned businesses in the United States alone, employing nearly 9 million people and generating more than $1.6 trillion in revenue. Yes, ladies, you get a snap for that. So for you and the audience that you serve, the client, the customer, whoever you're serving, have you, one, established some kind of personal connection to them and why you want to serve them, but also have you done just your basic research to find out more about the audience, why it makes sense for you to want to serve them? And I'll link, by the way, in the show notes for this episode to the study. It's from the Pew Research Center, I believe, or maybe it's from Nielsen. Either way, I'll be sure to link to it so that you can see it and find out more about it and read all about the fabulous thing that we women entrepreneurs are doing, right? For you, have you done your research and your connection with the audience? Have you personally, whether in person or online, engaged with your audience one-on-one? There are so many ways for us to connect now. I love hearing from all of you all. That's why I ask you to email me or contact me on social media so that I can find out what you're up to, 
of course, so I can support you, but also so I can hear from you what your needs are. So for you, do you make note of what the needs of your audience is? What are they asking you for? What do they say they're most grateful that they're already receiving from you? That's something that I pay attention to. People tell me they love hearing about the books and resources on the podcast. So I try to make sure when I'm speaking to someone, if they mention something casually about a book or a resource, or even if they don't, I make sure to try to ask that question because I know from at least the feedback that I've gotten from many of you all, that is something that you like about the information that you're provided. So in that way for you, whatever it is, like we said with the men's shoe idea, I don't know why that was the idea, but let's go with it. For that idea, are you connecting with men and asking them, what do they love about the shoes they already have? What do they dislike about the shoes they already have? What do they feel about they want in the perfect shoe? Whatever it is, how do you get in touch with your audience and find out more about them? And then doing your research to find out how often do men even buy shoes? I don't know. Look it up. Find it out. Whatever your business is, you want to know as much about it as possible. The next question Why does this audience matter to you? Do you have, as we said, a personal connection? Does your product satisfy a pain point for your audience that you have personally experienced? So in the case of the men's shoes, maybe it's not again you personally, but maybe your husband or your partner or someone else went through some experience. What's the story? I'm all about story. I love storytelling. Story is very powerful. So what's the story? You know about this audience now, you've done your research, but why does this audience matter to you and how are you connected to them? Number six in our questions to ask to get clear on your who, what, and why for your business. How are you communicating your mission? If I or anyone were to ask you to tell me about your business or what you do in one sentence, could you do it? Would you be able to do that? Would you have to think about it for a while? To make it even more challenging, could you describe it in 10 words or less? And within those 10 words, would I feel it? Would it make me want to say, "Mm, tell me more? Oh, that's interesting. Would it pique my interest in some way? So for example, for my 10 words or less mission, since we're going with that, I might say, I empower women to control their own narratives. Short, concise, it might pique someone's interest enough for them to at least say, hmm, how do you do that? Then I would be able to explain my work with helping women and women-led businesses shape their brand stories through my company, Chic Rebellion Media, which I mentioned earlier. And I would be able to share the work that I do with the Support is Sexy podcast and the fabulous women I feature to allow them to share their stories five days a week. So it all circles back to that short 10 word mission. I said 10 words, but actually I've heard people say six words or less, which you can also try. But I think 10 words is good to give you at least a full sentence, put a little few descriptors in there and really make it powerful. If you really want to challenge yourself, six words or less, how can you tell people who you are in six words or less? I might just say, I empower women. Very short, doesn't say a lot though. So give yourself 10 words or less to figure out the best way to communicate what you do. Now your overall mission doesn't have to be that short. This is just to push you to really cut it down and be as precise and concise as possible. The thing is you want to be clear and comfortable on your mission so you can clearly communicate that to other people. You want to know the long and the short of it, depending on how much time you have, you use a longer version or you use your 10 word version and you pique their interest and get them intrigued by what you're doing. And the next question, I think we're up to number six now. Does it sound good to you when you talk about your mission and you do your 10 words or however many words you're going to do? Does it sound good to you? Do you feel comfortable saying it? Now, you might say, how do I get comfortable saying it? Practice. You got to practice. On episode 182, you know, I interviewed Pivot Studio co-founder Evelyn Friesen, and she mentioned that she practiced saying what her company is all about out loud and took note of how comfortable or not she felt saying it. And when it didn't feel right to her, she adjusted it. She tried something for a little while. She felt like it wasn't working. She changed it up. So make sure to go listen to episode 182 so you can hear Evelyn talk about that and her business overall. But here's the thing to remember. 
You have to practice. Practice, in fact, saying it to yourself in the mirror. It might feel silly. It might sound silly. If it sounds silly, maybe you have to look at the reason. But try it. Practice it in the mirror because you're going to be saying it to people. You're not keeping all of this in your head. This is for when you encounter people and they ask you a question about your business. You want to feel comfortable talking about it. Is what you say too long? Do you stumble through it? Does it make sense to you? And the thing is, I know for me, especially as a writer, things make sense in my head or when I write it down on paper, I still write on paper, or when I type it in my notes, wherever it is, it might make sense. But then when I read it out loud or say it out loud, I stumble through it or I see how awkward something is said or I see that it could be said in a different way. So practicing out loud is important. And then once you've done it to yourself several times, Practice saying it to people at events or wherever you go, people who know nothing about your business, not your friends or people who already have an idea of what you're doing because they have context. You want to practice it with people who have no idea what you're doing and get their response. Don't ask them, what do you think? If you just say it and observe what their response is. I've done that too. And if people are kind of confused looking or they don't get it or they lose interest immediately, and if they lose interest, maybe they're not interested. But people should at least be able to look at you and understand what you're saying when you're talking about your business. You're not looking to see if they like it. You're looking to see if they get it. Remember that, right? You want to see if they get what you're doing, even if it's of no interest to them as a business. You still want them to walk away understanding, okay, I know what she does and I know what she's all about as far as business goes. We don't tell them everything else. As far as business goes, I know what she's all about. And then the last question I want you to consider, overall question, because I know I have a lot more than seven questions in here. I know, I know, I know it's a lot. But here's the overall question. What is your ultimate goal? If you were to dream the impossible dream for your business, what would that look like? If you were to stretch, I mean, really, really stretch, what would be your goal? Not your safe goal, your stretch goal. Don't think of this as something that you have to share or be prepped for someone else. This is something that you need to know for yourself. What is your destination? Where are you going with this thing? Are you just trying it out to see where it goes or do you have a destination in mind? Keeping in mind that your destination will change as you evolve. I know that has happened to me a couple of times. Things change, but I still have a destination in mind. And how do you hope that destination looks and feels when you get there? Really make it real for yourself. For me, it's to empower all women like you to be who they're meant to be, not who they're supposed to be, and to know that having it all doesn't mean doing it all alone. So that stems from, as I said, wanting women to control their own narratives, to share their own stories, to be fully themselves, and the support is sexy piece. Knowing that having it all doesn't mean doing it all alone. All right. So thank you all so much for listening. As always, hopefully this was helpful. Please let me know. You know, I want to hear from you. You can email me Elaine at Elaine or you can contact me on social media at Elaine Fluker or contact us at support is sexy and we will be sure to get back to you. I love hearing from you. Let me know what you're doing. Let me know your why and how you're getting clear on the different aspects of your business. Maybe you have some other advice that we can share with listeners in a future episode. I would love to hear from you. And now, as I mentioned in the beginning of the episode, I want you to go to support is sexy downloads with an S dot com support is sexy downloads dot com. And there will guide you through getting the free download for this episode. This is something that I'm going to do moving forward. There's other podcasts that do this. I love them. I text and email and whatever it takes to get the downloads because it's a nice, simple takeaway. Listening to the show is fantastic. Going to the website, of course, is fantastic for all the shows that I listen to. And hopefully you feel like that going to support is sexy podcast.com. But sometimes you want a little takeaway, something that you can have with you from the episode episode, especially when it's something like this that I'm doing, listing a bunch of questions, things that you can consider beyond the few minutes that you're listening to the podcast. So go to supportissexydownloads.com and you'll be able to get the free download for this episode. This way you can print it out. You can put it on your vision board or put it on your wall. You can capture it for your phone and then take a peek at it before you go into your next meeting or event where you'll be discussing your business. Whatever works for you, this way you'll have it there and you'll be able to easily be clear. All right, so thank you all again so much for listening. I truly appreciate you. Go to supportatsexydownloads.com so you can get that freebie. And until next time, you know what to do. 
Go out there and create something sexy. And I'll talk to you soon. Take care.